Okay, so if we want to do roll call, um, how about we start with you, Barb? Barb Milliron with the Devereaux Center. David? David Milliron, City of North Bend. Great. Laura, you there? Oh, didn't know if there was more. Hi, uh, my name is Lori Pampilo here as my pronouns are she, her, uh, and I am uh, with technical assistance with ICF uh, supporting uh, OHCS in all things related to the executive order. Hey. My name is Andrew Brander, Director of Personal Response for Coos County, Coos Bay, North Bend. And I'm uh, Coos Bay. And it appears that Jill is not coming in today. She's the representative for Coos County. Um, so moving to our next um, item, it's a director's report. Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. Glad everybody's here. Um, just a little bit from the last month, um, things are moving forward in the right direction. Um, as you can see, um, I have separated our um, stakeholders regarding different categories. So there's more uh, smaller groups to talk about different things. Uh, last week, I had met with the uh, with a faith based meeting, and it went very well. I had to think of different projects that they have in mind or would love to see in the future. And then from there, also to see how much budget wise it would need. Um, there was very good discussion on it. And uh, Barb, would you like to talk about it on your behalf of the faith base a little bit? Oh, uh, sure. So during the faith base meeting, um, I was able to fill the stakeholders in that were there on uh, our recent DKD project, one, one year anniversary for that, which is the clinic that is run here at the Devereaux Center the first and third Tuesday of every month. Um, also was able to let them know that we are getting ready to do a presentation at St. Monica's Catholic Church uh, this coming Sunday where they're going to be doing a second collection for the Devereaux Center at both their 8.30 and 10.30 mass. Um, anything else, Andrew? I think those were the major updates. And um, some of the other discussion we had is um, uh, looking at the 29th, Lori, I don't know if you know about this, but on the 29th, to have a uh, stakeholder meeting with the uh, businesses in Coos County, um, and that's going to be on Thursday the 29th, 2 to 5 at North Bend Lane, so on the beautiful deck there. Um, I have 15 panelists that are going to be participating, sharing uh, what programs are happening within their um, company and nonprofit agencies as well, and then it also opens up the opportunity for the local businesses of Coos County to talk about currently what they're seeing in the positives. I know there may be some negatives that you might want to talk about, but also maybe ideas on their end to figure out how we can continue um, to look at the crisis that we're currently having at this time. And so that's what we're having to come up right now. And continuing on uh, with going back, we, I, like I said, I met with faith based stakeholders um, uh, last week. And uh, tomorrow, I am looking at stakeholders that are working with the medical fields that Orca and possibly Berry Hospital and a few others. And then the following Thursday, um, I will be meeting um, with the tribes, uh, the veterans, and uh, people within the city that work for city government as well. And, and also with uh, the county, for is going to try to attend that meeting as well. Uh, so that's what's currently happening right now. Um, I also adapted a Facebook page. And with that Facebook page, you can also see the event for the event coming up. And I will be using the social media platform as well to uh, have our previous meetings. So, for example, if you missed the faith based meeting, you can go on the Facebook page that we have there, click on the link, and uh, 
see what the conversations were about. So that's what's going on. Uh, another thing that I've been working on and with the help of David and Nicole is we are looking for grant writers currently. Uh, just uh, received another email today. And so we currently have two grant writers opportunities. And I will continue to send emails out to other grant writers. Um, thanks to Nicole. Um, the link that I found it for was the Poor Family Foundation. People that work with Poor Family Foundation will write grants for them. And so I'm currently working on it as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and then also to talk about uh, today, Nicole, myself, and Chief Chapinar um, did an interview, which will be on um, one of the charter cable spectrum channels here soon. And I'm within two weeks. And uh, Roger Morgan uh, was uh, did the interview with us, and I think went pretty well. And that will be coming out here soon. And uh, I've attended a few other meetings. Uh, Barb and I, uh, David, uh, we attended the 100 uh, workshop. Um, does anybody would like to talk about that workshop? Leave that to Barb. Okay, Barb. <laughs> well, uh, so what I got from that presentation is this is a consulting organization that is working with various states, um, trying to bring together synergy among continuing of care providers combined with other stakeholders um, in regards to homelessness, get, getting people housed. And from my perspective, um, they were doing something very similar to what we did with the consulting agency that put together the strategic plan for Coos County, Coos Bay, and City of North Bend. Um, I feel that they one thing that they said was they they develop unrealistic goals that are believable. Um, so I almost got the impression that they're they're an organization that sort of is is a lights a fire under what's already what what's already happening. They they're helping bring people together, which we have already done. And then they're helping them move forward. They were expecting a five to six hour a week commitment from the people that do sign up to use them. And again, I feel like we're already on that road and don't really need to sign up for this. Uh, David, were you a part of that? Did you listen to the I presentation? Did. Yes, I did. And do you concur or... Um, yes, um, uh, basically it was almost a duplicate of existing services, and so we're well ahead of uh, um, that, which is always refreshing, um, but it's not, um, let's just say that it was a, a stretch from how it was marketed um, to what was reality. One question I did ask was, you know, since they are funded by the state, I did ask if we were to participate in their project, would we get a better look from the state as far as funding goes? And they could not make any guarantees with that. So that would be the only reason I could see us participating is if it gave us a leg up in getting state funding. And um, the state's already availed themselves as technical service to us. So we have that availed to us directly. And so I feel very good where we are with our strategic plan, um, the progress we're making on our individual goals and lining up um, uh, directly with the rock, and then also securing the grant writer um, that allow us to go after um, the opportunities uh, that will come through the balance of state funding, as well as those identified in our strategic plan uh, document. I also agree. You know, I wish you the best, but I think we're in the right place already. So, 
Um, so from there, I've talked about our stakeholders, uh, groups. If uh, if anybody has interest in becoming a member, part of the email, uh, let us know. You know, going back to talking about last week, I always I gave them the opportunity. I said, hey, would you guys want to meet once a month or every other month or quarterly? And they had a total agreement of once a month. So we will see how it goes uh, tomorrow as well. Um, and Andrew, um, if I could ask on behalf of one of the stakeholders out there, um, would it be possible to poll the stakeholders to see what time of day and what day of the week works best for them and, and go with whatever the majority says, it's possible that we may need to do these meetings after hours. Yeah, and uh, you know, for now we'll do a bit this between two and three. Um, and then I can bring that up for sure in our next meeting uh, with the medical field say colder so you're a good idea so for the future yes apologize i came in late i don't know i'll have you closer they can bear in here so i'll be down here oh yeah i came in late i don't know who Lori is Lori, do you want to reintroduce yourself uh, sure. Uh, I didn't catch your name either. Uh, so Lori Pampilo Harris, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I am with the technical assistance team um, supporting the state of Oregon um, in correlation with Governor Kotek's executive order on unsheltered homelessness. Um, so as Coos County is beginning to think through um, how they might be um, a part of uh, that funding group with Curry, Josephine, and Douglas, um, and thinking about creating a goal around um, moving folks straight from streets to housing and increasing your um, shelter beds. Um, the technical assistance team is uh, here to support that type of work and thinking um, through thought partnership and strategic planning. And I'm Drew Farm I'm on the Coos Bay City Council. Uh, which executive order was it? There's been several. Uh, Executive Order 2302. And uh, with my director's report, um, that's all I have for today. Okay. Well, um, that was two items of number three, which is our advisory board report. Um, now, if we want to individually, if there's anything to share. I think uh, uh, I'm interested in circling back on the thing with Lori whenever that comes in the conversation. Yeah. Okay. David, did you want to share anything? Um, no. Uh, I mean, all efforts are on the collaborative Coos Bay project that uh, at some point we probably have to give it a code name because we can't really talk much about it. Um, but I, I would be curious, Nicole, if you've had direct communication with Lori so that um, she's versed in uh, what we're doing, where we're headed um, with um, the funding and how she can help um, uh, with the um, with with the Shovel Ready project. So today's my first day uh, interacting with Lori. Um, the submission of the I mean, I just copied where you had sent um, originally, David, suggesting that um, Bay you know, County, Bay and Bend would do our own kind of project. Um, and I think Beth is the one who's been interacting on that thread back from OHCS. She confirmed receipt of our local planning group listing. So. So yeah, I guess Lori, if there was something that you could give some insight on as far as us moving forward, you know, we had a little bit of discussion. I think there may have been a little bit of discussion with um, Roseburg and I'm not sure who else <laughs> David might have talked with, but lumping those counties in that large regional scope, um, 
makes it a little bit challenging um, to focus on you know, the local solutions that really we're all trying to work for. So um, I think that's why we said, hey, we're going to use our pilot structure. We've already got a strategic plan. We've already got some projects um, kind of in mind and keep walking that path forward. And so submit it on our own path. Yeah, and I think um, the state is fully supportive if that's the process that you guys want to take. I think part of the collaborative approach is um, if you have providers that are crossing service areas, um, that means each service provider is going to have to apply to four different counties, right? And so that's a heavy burden administratively for service providers when we really need for them to be concentrating on the actual services and providing that. So just thinking about that, thinking about the fiscal agent, where the funding is going to be running through. Sometimes it makes sense to have a centralized uh, funding agent for uh, the region rather than four different ones. Um, and so just thinking about some of those things. Um, if you have a, um, you know, there is going to be kind of like a, a readiness. If you have a project, it sounds like you guys have a project that's ready to increase the number of emergency shelter beds in your community. Um, that is what OHCS is very interested in. When you say shovel ready versus how close to being um, completed, they want to help kind of get things across the finish line as soon as possible. So the so closer you are to that finish line, the more interested uh, is where they would be looking at. Um, and then also really focused on rehousing. Um, emergency shelter is not a necessary step to permanent housing. Um, that has been shown and proven proven and evidenced um, throughout the country, moving people straight from streets to housing um, has been a proven method and is a safe method to get folks um, into permanent housing uh, and getting them sustainable resources and support. Um, so, you know, they are going to be looking at um, doubling down on efforts where you guys are already working with the unsheltered population around um, around uh, outreach, around navigation, around, around housing location, landlord incentives, um, barrier busters, what are the things that are prohibiting folks to get into permanent housing? Is it because they have arrears? Is it because they have you know, um, a, a court um, issue that we could help resolve through legal aid? So thinking about some of those barriers that those who are currently unsheltered or most likely to become unsheltered what are the barriers to housing and how are we planning on helping to resolve those issues? So those are some of the things that um, uh, this opportunity through the EO 2303 funding is looking at. Um, and again, I think you, I've seen many of the folks uh, in this, at least the names have already been participating in the listening sessions. Um, and so those were opportunities to kind of like think big, Think about what that might look like and then just align um, resources across the region if there's opportunities there. So then again, it's easier for your service providers um, and then also with the fiscal agent and how you're going to be receiving RFPs. Um, so happy to, to respond to any thoughts or reactions um, from, you, from you all. I have a couple. Um, fiscal agents and operating nonprofits, the majority that are operating here, either serve Coos or Coos Curry. Uh, Douglas only overlaps with us for Reed Sports, so encompassing the entirety of the county of Douglas wouldn't make sense for our purposes. The only agency I'm aware of that crosses those three is NeighborWorks Umqua, and Josephine is entirely separate. That that doesn't make any sense to include. Uh, the housing issue and housing clients, in my experience in the field, we've got an abundance of clients who could qualify for housing. There are a number who have barriers, but there's also a large number who don't. The only problem we have is the stock of housing. And when we look at the transition, I'm thinking you're referencing the housing first model, uh, when you say transition from street to housing, that when we talk about supported housing, we don't have the medical staff that the population already have due to the lack of housing for that medical staff. So we could produce as much housing as we would like and call it supported housing, but the staff to provide the support won't be here. It will just be the name over the door. It's not going to function that way out here until we get more housing produced. 
that would probably be the area where we could use the most assistance. It's any mechanism by which the state can promote housing development here. We can fill the seats. It's just like in the recovery section up here. We've never had a deficit of people that would like to go to recovery, but there are no places for them. That's the biggest barrier we experience. So it sounds like housing stock um, is absolutely, um, unfortunately, too common um, across the country as being a limitation to getting folks to permanent housing. Um, and so through a scattered site model, utilizing landlord incentives um, and really developing relationships with private landlords on the private market um, through incentives. And we've seen as high as incentives of you know $3,000 in addition like you get a $3,000 bonus, and then if that person stays housed for six months after that, then it's an additional $1,000, right? And then what that gives the landlord an opportunity to see that, hey, you know, it's working with these type of clients. I can do this type of work. In addition to that, um, having intensive case managers, I don't know, I'm not familiar with your rapid rehousing providers, um, but that's where you would then increase. So these dollars could help you staff up uh, case managers that would then work with those clients, follow those clients straight from the street, start providing case management services while they're on the streets and following them all the way through housing. And it could be in that scattered site housing. Um, and so what we have seen is those incentives along with intensive case management and being able to provide those type of services. With these dollars, we're not looking for permanent supportive housing. This is rapid rehousing dollars that this is um, pivoting. Rapid rehousing dollars is short-term assistance anywhere from one month to 12 months. So even thinking about master leasing, um, if you have like an apartment building or a motel that's being converted, you can do block leasing where it pretty much guarantees the rent to that landlord or that property owner for a certain amount of months. And so those are certain incentives that we have seen from private landlords and property owners that get them excited about setting aside a certain number of units just for the purposes of rehousing those who are unhoused. eight years, the barrier they always encountered is we were doing turn. When you look at the statistics for some of these, you can show a large number of rehousing if you ignore your recidivism rate. We end up having a large number of rehousing because people do not have We We already have the incentives. I ran the programs that have the incentives. The deficit we had was somewhere for them to go. It's not that we have a problem convincing the landlord to take our money. It's that there aren't, there is not enough housing. If, if the money were going into something that made housing to be purposeful, right now what we're talking about for this money is to incentivize landlords who are already incentivized. They already want to house people that they don't have houses to provide. Well, I can't respond. And uh, these dollars that I'm providing technical assistance for is not for development. Um, these are specific for rehousing, uh, it's specific for outreach, and it's specific for emergency shelter. I do know that OHCS and the upcoming budget is thinking about how we create more like more turnkey projects um, that could be available, um, more competitive dollars in that area, but these specific dollars are not for that. So you know, those conversations are for legislators, is for OHCS. That's something that these specific dollars cannot be, aren't supported for. Those are not, that's not what it's centered on and that's what it's, that's not what it's targeting. But I totally understand um, your limitations. And again, it's a limitation all across the country. Not that make that makes you feel any better, um, but I do understand. Um, but, you know, if you feel like you have the landlords and, you know, you have the incentives and the challenge is going to be, you just don't have the housing stock. I don't know where these dollars would then be ad advantageous to you. That's my concern is that it's not, it's not effective use of money for our region. But like you say, that's legislators. From uh, Lori, so I'm with the Devereaux Center, which is a service provider 
uh, we provide navigational services as well as we have supported housing, housing 30 people um, that would otherwise be homeless. Do you feel from your perspective, do you feel like there is an emphasis on either the 150 beds that are more emergency shelter or the 450 that are reha rapid rehousing. Do you feel like there's a, an emphasis coming from the state on either of those or is it equal? Uh, I would say that what we know about emergency shelter currently across the state of Oregon is that there's either a, not enough and it's high barrier. And so if there is emergency shelter, that's going to be, in, if there's going to be an increase in the number of emergency shelter beds, the values and the mission centeredness of those additional emergency shelter beds should be on low barrier and housing focused. So how are you going to move, be, how are those beds going to help somebody be safe and move them quickly into permanent housing? And so that is some of the elements that they're going to be looking at. And then also, are those how soon or how close can those emergency shelter beds be online? So that would be the other. Uh, we are always interested anywhere uh, that we house folks, right? So the the rapid rehousing is of high interest. And I think um, when you look at the funding model, the formula that the state is looking at, the number of people experiencing unsheltered homelessness in your community, the unsheltered homelessness rate in your community, the severe rent burden at or below 35,000, and the number of people in poverty. They are going to come up with a formula, if you guys are going to go out at it on your own, for just Coos County and say, what is that? And so that may just come back of like, you just need two emergency shelter beds, right? Uh, you know, they may say this funding is only going to equal two. Does that really get you what you need? I think if you're positioned with something that's close to being completed with emergency shelter beds or like, hey, we were planning a 15 emergency shelter bed, but if we can add 10 more with these dollars, I think that would be of interest. Um, but the rehousing, just because we know for sure that we're gonna be moving somebody straight into permanent housing is where there is a lot of attractiveness, right? Because when you're moving somebody to emergency shelter, you can say, yes, we're gonna move them into permanent housing, but how long is that pathway into permanent housing? And if, do they time out of emergency shelters? Does that mean that, you know, after 90 days, we didn't find them a place to stay, are they gonna in, in, uh, in back, in back up into the streets? Um, those are some of the things that you all will need to think about in terms of what it is that you like to present um, to the state. I would say present everything that you want to see for you community. Dream big, and they are going to be the ones to say, okay, this is what it looks like based upon the funding formula and then based upon the allocation that's going to be happening across the rock. But don't put anything off the table that you're excited about, that you think that, hey, we know that if we have these additional dollars, we can really get this done. We're going to double down on these efforts, or we're going to do something we've never done before when it comes to working with the unsheltered population. Those are the things that I think that we, that the state and the governor's office is looking for communities to model um, behavior that has been successful, but also thinking of things that you wish you could have done, but couldn't have done because you don't have, you didn't have the resources for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so Nicole, let's, let's step back and look at this from uh, 50,000 feet. Um, let's layer this. So let's suppose that we had a project that, um, could have say 30 or 40 pallet shelters. And then from there, they potentially then could graduate into say a Gloria Day uh, housing project or uh, potentially could grow into the uh, Banger School um, um, housing authority project. And so 
we do the short term through say that say a Devro project or Salvation Army project. And then we have um, uh, uh, some incentives then to uh, migrate those into the regular support of permanent housing. And so that's why those team players need to be at the table um, when we move forward with this, which is why they're on the list. Because I think that that's how we sort of have to keep pushing forward. We have to look at the full continuum here. We can't look at it as piecemeal. Does that make sense? I didn't hear you, but I could read left. You said, yep. Yes, that makes great sense. And I absolutely agree. Um, I think we have to do what we can do right now rapidly. And I think our project is that. Um, the things that are sitting right there ready to be done are the next steps for those folks. Um, not everyone is going to be able to go streets to a home. They, we're going to have to build that system here still yet. Yeah, the mental health system will be encumbered with it. And again, we, we fall back on the problem of providers. We can't retain them because they can't find housing. I just had somebody from out of town that does supported services staying with me for about a week while they looked around, they couldn't stay. And so, and 20 years experience can't come to the community because there's no housing for them. So Drew, we, we sort of extend it where we bring in Matt and say, okay, I know that the housing authority is waiting with bated breath for the announcement to come say, mm, say September on their tax credits to move forward with their project. Yeah. So we make them a strategic partner um, and potentially have additional influx of funding um, so that, because right now they're looking at phase one, but if we can look at both phases, because there's there's a funding stopgap there to be able to get all 140 to 150 housing units. And it's only going to get more expensive down the road. That's that's the issue. That's the problem. Yeah. And so it's 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 cheaper to go collectively now than it is to do phase one and then wait for phase two only to see that you got a 20 to 25 percent escalation on those additional uh, housing units. Yeah, we, we just ran into that at the city county insurance board meeting yesterday as the increasing cost of construction due to the lack of providers is causing rates to go up to the cities. So it, it's definitely not going to help while we wait for development unless that can get accelerated. Okay. All right. Anything else on that topic? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Um, I just wanted to share uh, Jill from the county is on with us now. Uh, Lori is here helping us uh, having conversations about the technical assistance um, side of things. So, thanks. Thank you. I apologize for being a little late. Um, they're doing construction in my office, so I was uh, unfortunately moving some furniture around and couldn't get on. <laughs> so thank you. And thank you, Lori, for working with us. Well, Do you have any updates to share out of the county? What did you say, David? I'm sorry. Do you have any updates? Um, she was doing round robin to see if you had any updates to share out of the county for this um, call. I do, don't really have any updates to share with anybody. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, let me know. Is, is there a way that maybe you can have a little bit of summary since Drew wasn't here in last week's meeting with a few others? Sorry to dump stuff on you, Lori. I just got to throw stuff out there anytime I get the chance. <laughs> okay. I may, did I miss a question? And I see Jill talking, so I didn't know. Jill, you're on mute. 
Andrew, were you just asking for me to give a summary of the last, what was talked about last time? Yeah, if you can, there might be a few that were intending that maybe we can still talk about, yeah. The only thing the county's working on currently is um, they're still working to achieve their um, homeless camping ordinance. Um, I'm still kind of waiting for county council to get back to that. Um, we've done a number of projects as far as removing barriers for um, zoning wise for housing, but we haven't really worked on any of the other um, projects. do what you got capacity for. All right. Well, um, Lori, I really appreciate you being here with us today. It was um, helpful. It may be a little discouraging, but it gives us a focus where we um, have a good path forward. I think we'll chat a little bit, but uh, appreciate you taking the time. For yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like you guys have. I mean, it sounds like you guys know your unsheltered population. You have street outreach. You guys are thinking about expanding emergency shelter. So that's where you can focus this at, right? So how can we double down on what's working and go a little bit further with it? Um, that's where I would try. And like you said, then building the housing pipeline. And we know that takes a little bit longer, but you guys have the eyes on that. I would also say, no, this probably isn't the right timing for it. But master leasing includes master leasing with PHAs. Um, so be thinking about how that might look like. If there's future opportunities for funding, I do, from my understanding and the words that's being utilized um, by the state, is that this is a down payment on future opportunities that are going to be focused on unsheltered homelessness. And for those who are currently, so anybody that you're that you will be housing under 2302. Um, there's currently something in the budget that will be able to continue to provide funding to keep that family and that household housed. Um, so just wanted to like make sure that you guys knew that this is what they're calling a down payment on the efforts around rehousing those who are unsheltered and also um, uh, increasing the number of emergency shelter beds that are housing focused and low barrier. And again, housing first focused um, in your community. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. It was good to be in community with you all. And thank you for all that you do. I know that it's complex work, but it sounds like you guys have a good strategic plan and you have a path ahead. So like I said, double down on what's working and keep at that. And um, it sounds like you guys are working on the on the housing pipeline at the same time. Thanks, Lori. Would you be okay if I continue to have you part of our monthly meeting that you can attend when you're able to? I can, Andrew. It may not be me. We have um, other technical assistance that's going to be totally focused on rural um, housing. I'm already working um, with uh, three of the EO regions. Um, I'm working with Jackson County, Marion, Polk, and Central uh, Oregon. Um, and so we have another uh, set of TA that's working just with the rural focus because rural focus has its own unique challenges and its own unique opportunities. Um, so we're bringing, or we have some team members that are focused on that, but um, I will uh, be bringing in somebody else. But if I'm able to continue the conversation with you all, I would love to, um, because I'm really interested on uh, the concept. I know you said, David, you wanna name it something that you can't talk about yet, but I'm really curious about what it is. Um, and I'm sure I'm gonna see it when we get a, a preview of the plans that are submitted. So um, we'll be really eager and excited to see what's coming from Coos County in the future. Yeah, the only reason um, uh, we're being skeptical, which which um, you can talk offline with with Nicole, um, is because uh, at this point uh, we're trying. Well, it, it's executive session, so we 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 have the larger plan. We have to be able to make sure that uh, the property is where we need it to be um, in the uh, pipeline. So that's what we're focusing on right now. Great. Nicole, feel free to to connect with me and we can uh, dig deep into that. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks all. All right. Take care. Thank you. So to to um, 
leapfrog, if you will, from that conversation. Um, the more I keep thinking about this and what is on the plate, um, our group may very well want to move a little quicker and um, hire and or contract with a project manager to stay on this project full time and get everything that's necessary. You heard very clearly from her some of what um, was relayed, Nicole, in the earlier meeting this week about shovel ready and where this has to be. And there is a lot of effort in a very short time here. And there's only a couple of folks in the community that I think have the expertise um, to potentially bring one of them on board. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Talking to Michael Couch would be a good idea. Who? Michael Couch. Uh, you may access through Scott Cooper. I think we need to. I I, I definitely think that. You know. You know, and it always gets. Um, you know which means we have to go through sort of the, <clears throat> think about what it takes to get a resource. Right now, unless the county gives a little more latitude, we have to keep going back through with the process that Jill has had to get even to say, secure Andrew. Um, and so we've got to be able to be more nimble and move on this pretty quickly. Um, And so that person has to strategically be able to work among the various agencies. And there's a lot of legwork, footwork. There's none of us that have that kind of bandwidth. We need a dedicated resource to be on this project. Just something we could contemplate uh, if we have a couple of folks doing a car bill contract. A couple of folks or votes? Uh, a couple of people. If we're looking at a couple of managers, if you have some ideas of who this person might be to do a contract with Cardinal. I only know of one. Um, you heard Drew throw out a name, but um, uh, obviously we, we've had another individual at the partner that uh, is, is longtime former Orca who certainly sent around his resume um, um, early in the game. Uh, Lauren. Yeah. I mean, if we have an uh, idea that he would have interest in working in that realm, then, I mean, what do you think, Jill? Is that something that you can kind of pull quickly through your processes for a cardinal uh, arrangement? Um, All I would say is if this is part of the grant, then there isn't any reason why we can't go through Barrett, Cardinal, or whomever um, to do such a thing. Um, I am just curious if this is a project manager was part of the grant. I mean, it was the office of homeless response and the office, the coordinator, the director for that, but I don't know. So Nicole, if you actually, have the actually, contract, if you look, actually, if you look at the contract, it's implementation of the strategic plan. So the, the, the legislation required us to set up the office and pay for the office um, and then to submit the uh, strategic plan, but then it allows us to implement the strategic plan and the balance of the funds um, were by, by uh, 4123 is for that purpose. Well, it says acquire technical assistance and capacity building, including contracting with consultants, pay for other expenses reasonably necessary to meet the requirements, um, funding to support the ongoing operations of the coordinated homeless response system, increasing or streamlining resources and services to people at risk, uh, Incorporating, no, sorry, that's not good. 
creating pathways to permanent and supportive housing that is affordable. So, I don't I mean, we'll look at the agreement, see if that's any different, but. I think it is objective, but not mechanisms. Okay, so project description within 90 days, we have to get into an agreement. Uh, we shall use these funds for hire necessary staff for the office. Support coordinated communications and public engagement. Support community outreach and policy development, including stipends for people with current or recent lived experience of homelessness. Acquire technical assistance and capacity building, including contracting with consultants, and pay for other expenses reasonably necessary to meet the requirements in this Exhibit A. To adopt the plan, we do a reporting. So a project manager could possibly fall under the, the realm of consultant. I'd say it's probably staffing, isn't it? Are you thinking, David, that this person would be working with Andrew? Andrew would basically um, be giving out that portion of this project to a project manager. Is that what you're thinking? How well, are you thinking this works? So for this particular one, there's an identified project with identified deliverables. And so this, this project manager has to work with the project owners. In this case, the project owners would be the city of Coos Bay and the Devereaux Center. And so we had a meeting with those two project owners earlier this week. Um, and have since laid out an entire laundry list of what's necessary to get that project uh, to be shovel ready. And that project clearly is within the realm of the balance of care 26.1 million grant opportunity that's coming down that Lori just spoke of. And so we've got to, in order to get on par or out ahead of these other counties in order to make a dent, um, Coos Bay and the Urban Renewal Agency have certain things they have to do. But once we get a green light, we need to hit the ground running. If we wait for that green light to go out and get the technical uh, assistance lined up, we're, we're potentially several weeks behind. And so we need to move, I believe, on this one rather quickly. We need to identify that resource um, and, uh, and um, Andrew needs to concentrate still on the strategic plan of a lot of those coordinated efforts. This particular person is being really hired um, in order to achieve the identified goal out of the strategic plan. And so they'll still come back up through the reporting structure, but it's really going to be the project owners, which is again, we're, we're the three of us are in contract, meaning the Royal Three, uh, the sit, two cities in the county. And so right. the project owners really being assigned to one of the three, but working directly in this case with the Devro Center. If the Salvation Army project starts to materialize, we probably may use that same talent for that effort too, because the Devro Center and the Salvation Army are talking. And again, I think that we might have some further opportunities with bringing funding to the Gloria Day project and partic particularly also maybe the Housing Authority, which crosses Coos and Curry County, which is not a bad thing, because so does Orca and some of the other um, providers. So we 
in my mind, we have a very strategic opportunity, but none of us, you know, short of me cutting loose and saying, you know, that's my full-time job, because there's a lot that's on that list. And I don't think any of us are capable of full providing those level resources from our existing government. Right. So what I'm going to get asked is how long is this the term of this position? Is this position just for a specific project? Because it's going to determine whether this is going to meet really contracted services or whether this is going to have to be a permanent position. And we, I went through this with Andrew's position and we said, well, it was attached to a grant. So therefore we could get away with doing it through contracted services. Um, so that's kind of what I was asking. You know, it sounds like that this is going to be a little bit longer term than maybe just this project. Um, well, but we can we can do new contracts. That's the fascinating thing. Well, you so, can do new contracts, but I'm going to tell you that Megan will flip out at me if I do not ask you. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm, calling you. I'm calling you. Let me do some quick math here. So 600 hours, that's 15 weeks. Um, and so I'll be surprised if this um, uh, contractor exceeds 600 collective hours on this particular in order to get this shovel ready. Because it's not, th th this, is, this is on the front end, uh, it's not implementation, uh, if you will. We're, we're trying to get this project shovel ready. And so that application is going to be vetted well before 15 weeks. So even if they work okay. 40 hours a week for 15 weeks, we're not going to exceed 600 hours. So I would say that we would say not to exceed 600 billable hours you know, or so second question I'm going to have to ask you is, are we providing equipment or would that be something that they're responsible for? What type um, of equipment? Computer equipment, internet, anything like that. Um, Hopefully they then... should be able to do it because in this case, quite frankly, I have a desk they could work out of. If it came push to come to shove, I got a full workstation set up. I'm sure that, you know, if we needed another drop computer over at you know andrews but i would think that they could work from their home okay because um uh you know drew's put in one name um i know that we had gotten an application from another that was very much wanting to help you know and offer it up so i don't know what their situation is whether or not they're even eligible to be contracted with but as many times as we've met with them, um, they certainly have done past projects uh, okay. and they have the experience. And so we just need to figure out between those two and if there's anybody else and then get them on board. Okay. I, I just don't want to. So we should probably start with some sort of job, generalized job description of what it is that we're expecting. Scope of work. Yes. Yeah, much rather say scope of work rather than a job description. Um, and that can come from Nicole because she can okay. pretty much attach the list I did as sort of deliverables. Does that makes yeah. sense. Well, the, we, scope, the scope of work, I mean, the reason I'm asking that is because, you know, if we use Cardinal or whatever, they're going to ask for some sort of general job description. So that's why I said a job description. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're going to ask, you know, what kind of tools this person is expected to have. And then of course they're going to ask for a wage. So those are the things that we have to figure out. How did we hire Jennifer? Very good question. I wasn't involved in that one. <laughs> she just got a contract, but how'd she get paid? I'm going to assume that that was something that Melissa set up directly through Megan. Because I would see doing this position the same way. Yeah. We not to exceed very similar professional services contract. Well, if we do a contract, so we if we do a contract, we have to go out and and do the uh, bits uh, of the contracting. Yeah, we don't have time. Uh, for that. So that's up to you. I mean, no, no, no. And that's no, the way I'm... we started with Andrew, and then we decided to go the other way. <laughs> well, that's okay. why I was suggesting Cardinal would be an option because it would get us out of the need to do. Unless your guys' contracting rules allow for you to define this as an emergency or 
Um, it's a very specialized service that, you know, I mean, we have some things like that in our, um, you just have to write up like how you got to that selection. Um, that yeah, like sole source findings, basically. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, the, the this is a conversation I had earlier, which was, you know, weeks earlier, was um, you always get each, each different government has their own different procurement, you know. So like, for instance, a city manager here, I have authorization under state law and then local um, contracting law because we're we're buying by state. I can do up to $100,000 um, professional services engagement um, as as city manager. So we just have different, you know, so at some point, you know, maybe the county does an IGA with the two cities so that we can get a little flexibility. Um, you know, but for this particular one, um, there's a pathway, and that is we can do through Cardinal. We just have to get a scope of work um, and potential deliverables, and then figure out who the person is, and then type up um, uh, the baseline requirements for that position. I think Drew, like, my dad, try did Drew try <laughs> to type in? Oh, no, I can't remember what I said. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, th I thought I heard the volume on y'all's like, we got to work on that. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering if this is not because are you running the owl through like a hotspot, Andrew, or are you on mm -hmm. Wi Fi? It's on Wi Fi. He needs to have a network connection over on this side of the room. Yeah, so we can bring you over one. I, I, I've, I've got spares, Jill. I, I'll go over and take a look and, and see. Hey, look, I can see myself. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll do a pop over there and see if I can okay. help out with that, Jill. Okay. Thank you. Cause I noticed that when you were trying to host the bigger meeting last week, like the video quality was pretty poor and the audio was in and out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was like, you need to close the blind maybe. Cause it was like super dark. <laughs> 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 The better it is a little better yeah. okay. the other question is um jill do you have any clue what the project is i'm talking about i don't i thought it was hush hush am i supposed to know <laughs> well i i would say contact nicole Online. yeah we're on a recorded yeah. so yeah <laughs> but but um that way um we can bring you up to speed because you'll have to be able to answer questions oh okay the Hey, <laughs> what are you signing me up for? <laughs> no, don't worry. I don't think the Department of Justice is watching us. So. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, um, you good with that, Nicole? Do you have yeah. We, um, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I need to get it done this week because... One, obviously we need to get it done, but I will be out next week. So I will attempt to attend the 21st meeting um, with OHCS. So, um, but if not, it would be great if be there, make sure we're staying in the mix. Yeah, um, just send the um, info and, and I can put it on my calendar if I'm available. And uh, I can also uh, just backstop you. And just so that I can fill Tara in on, on what we've discussed, this consultant or project manager would be specifically for the purposes of this balance of state funding, uh, right? For, for a specific identified project uh, to get it shovel ready. Yep. And we need to be to that point so we can apply for that balance date by July 14, somewhere. Yep. We have very yeah. short period of time. Yep. Yeah. They need so, to be available immediately. Should, since the two of you put names forward, perhaps maybe you reach out to those names to see if either of them has capacity for us to even be contemplating this with them. Yeah. <laughs> Go with him, though. 
Okay. Do you how does Andrew can reach out to Bob and talk to him about it? Is that okay with the board? Well, I, I think that anyone that's qualified that we're aware of right now, we should tap on the shoulder and say, hey, you know, are you available? That way, um, you know, if there's someone available, uh, you know, I I I only know of the one, you know, through my interactions and then originally the original letter of inquiry and resume he sent. And so if if there's a second, you know, Let's find out because there very well may be another project not too far behind this one. Yeah, definitely lining some options up. Yeah. Because that's the other thing I guess I would ask of this group. When she says think big, should we be layering these when we put our request in? Like, okay, we have this, which is going to accomplish this goal. It right off the bat is going to chunk away at those 100 beds. Yeah. But then we put these the other two things, which are different projects in different levels of housing um yeah i think so I, I think you're right nicole i mean from what i gather the um they want to invest the money where they're going to get the most return so if we oh. can show that we have a continued return um they're more likely to give us that funding yeah and so for us this resource should be obviously directly with the project um, owners. And then they need to have, you know, additional tentacles um, to reach out to the housing authority, to reach out, you know, and have the conversations collectively with Glory Day and all of these, because we we have to lay out almost as if it's a strategic plan or, or sort of Gantt chart for how we're going to get and accomplish that and then um, Drew certainly will be very resourceful on making sure that we we fill in the gaps of the potential providers that have got to be on that Gantt chart to accomplish each stage um, uh, so that we have the wraparound services and, and we're aware of them. Um, what I mean by the additional projects um, isn't specifically that projectory. But for instance, like, let's say the Salvation Army decides, well, we're going to do our warming shelter. We want, so there's other spokes, if you will. This 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 project, think of it as a cone, very much like the Salvation would be a cone. But at some point, a radar screen, it's going to then cross and blip the cone. Does that make sense? Almost if those cones yeah. are starting to inter intersect. And so they will. So they start at the, the, the base project. And then as they get larger in the cone, that's where we're headed, which is that um, supportive housing and permanent supportive housing. Um, and that's the ultimate goal of anyone that starts at the grassroots project. And so the Devro Center is like a grassroots. Let's say the Salvation Army would be a grassroots if the um, Catholic Church moves forward, they would be grassroots, but then at some point they will intersect with the rest of the cones. And we need to present to the, to the state the, the entire radar screen. Yes. yes. I, I, it sounds like, is, is Gloria Day and the school project, are they even aware of the balance of state, what we're discussing, the money that we're trying to get from the state? No. Nope. Nope. Unless so, they know on their no. Pardon? Unless they know on their own. Yeah, so it sounds like a meeting needs to be convened ASAP, including those stakeholders, to bring them up to speed. Yeah, and that would be a project um, owner with the project manager sitting down because there's established relationships already between, say, the city of Coos Bay and that group. Um, North Bend has some interaction because of some of the uh, utility uh, interchange. And so right now there, there's, there's, you know, there's potential costs there that can be defrayed um, because they don't like some of the answers we've had to give them on, on the cost. Um, so, so collectively, that's why we have to have that full time. So I think we're all in agreement that we need to move as quickly as we can. 
on identifying that person, start putting together the scope document, uh, try to move them uh, through, and um, and then um, and then we may very well have to have an emergency call meeting to actually authorize the expenditure. Although, you know, is this a regular meeting or an executive? I think it's a regular meeting, right? Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four. So we have a quorum. We can. Um, so I'll move that we go ahead and authorize uh, the hiring of a uh, project manager uh, not to exceed uh, 600 hours um, uh, 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 in order to meet the um, balance of state uh, grant application requirements. You got all that written down there, um, uh, uh, um, Andrew? Oh, hold on. The secretary. Is he the secretary? I'm the secretary, but. Oh, no, okay. I'm you got all is, that? I'm hoping this is recorded because that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, would, would you want to amend that motion that says and in an hourly rate not to exceed? Because uh, we can probably contract with a lot of people for six hundred hours. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what the cost would be, and so um, I, I figured that um, as as chair, you could probably use good judgment. Okay. What did RCI or our whatever? Uh, what did they charge hourly? Do you know? Uh, I don't know that they had an hourly charge. I it was they were not to exceed. Flat. Yeah, they were a flat amount as well. He thought it around 150 an hour. So they want to think. Yeah, I know they tried to hire Barb at 50 bucks an hour. So that's a good not to exceed. I think you need more than 50 bucks an hour. I don't know. If they're retired, I don't know. They're not making really? anything now. And they probably have yeah. security and retirement, so they don't want to bump it too much. So, but that's why I didn't put it in. I figured that Nicole could <laughs> use good judgment given her finance background. Not to exceed at seventy-five dollars an hour would come out to the forty-five thousand. Yeah, I was gonna say probably yeah. seventy-five to eighty. Yeah. So not to exceed fifty thousand dollars. Propose the amendment mm -hmm. not to exceed fifty. Yeah, I'm so. fine with that. Okay. So. All right. We have a motion. Second. Okay. Uh, with no further discussion, I'll ask for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right. All right. We accomplished something. Huh? We accomplished something. We always accomplished something. Come on. Due to the small time frame uh, permission from the board, can I contact this individual and possibly see even if he can meet tomorrow to talk to him? I'd agree. And uh, for those that want to be involved, I can send an email to to see if they can attend in person in my office. Yeah, you can see if he's available. And um, I mean, based on schedule and stuff, um, the 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 project owners would would you know I, I would say that you would start with Nicole there at the table uh, or Roger at the table yeah. or the other. Um, uh, Roger and I have some conflicts tomorrow, um, and then I also see that we have the uh, uh, you have the health providers meeting tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, we need to wiggle and see if we can wiggle in that as quickly as can, um, and then. Um, <clears throat> uh, rule of thumb, we don't discuss money. Uh, we we uh, uh, ask always ask them uh, to uh, propose a rate, and then we find out whether or not it's within uh, what we can afford. So, but uh, but 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 he certainly has to understand the scope, um, and so that if we're going to have an in person meeting, you know, sort of laying it out and bring bringing that entity up to speed real quick. Madam Chair, are you okay if I set that up and you meet with the city? Yeah. Well, um, I'll get back, check with Roger what the schedule looks like. Tomorrow, I'll definitely get to that Friday, try to get this. 
I'll work with our chair and we'll get it done as soon as possible. All right, does anyone have anything else? Yes. Um, what are we doing about, um, we've got resumes in, uh, what are we doing about uh, our grant writers? Because we're going to need a grant writer lined up. Yeah, I haven't looked at them yet, so I will do that um, this afternoon. Um, I mean, I don't know if anybody has looked at them and they have an opinion on a. I have seven seconds. Um, I did uh, Yeah, I have seven seconds. Push it broader if you want me to. Everybody on the committee, it's up to you as the board. Take it to me. I'll see if there are any familiar names. Okay. <laughs> have, have you looked at it, David? Did you have I, a. I've started, for instance, like, you know, I flagged one immediately because it's like, I think it's like in the last, I, I'm just making up the numbers out of memory, but it's like, I've been doing this for 10 years and I brought in like $10 million. I'm like, that's a million dollars a year. You know, I mean, this isn't even my full time job and I do that in my sleep. So, you know, all right, X, move on. So I want someone that like brings in big bucks and like can run circles around us. And I will continue uh, with my list to send uh, proposals. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, we should have a, a, a deadline to get back so that we can um, make some decisions on um, uh, that because we're going to need um, a grant writer for this project. Could there be a recommendation that we need to meet sooner than our executive meeting on Wednesday? So we? I'll be here Wednesday, but I could uh, I can pass on my thoughts on the ones we've received so far. Okay. All good. Okay. All we right. Also vote remotely, you know. Yeah. Wherever you are, you're going to Hawaii, aren't you? Hawaii. Yes. She's gonna disclose where she's going. You're not gonna find her. <laughs> I don't know. I ran into Chloe in the middle of Hawaii. I mean, it happens. <laughs> We're yeah. gonna come find you. <laughs> Oh wait, our meetings in Hawaii next next week. Can <laughs> <laughs> get there. I can get there. Our Department happening. of Justice is now watching us. <laughs> um. Yeah, I definitely will attend when I can. We just have some activities. Like if I'm out kayaking, you guys are not going to make the top of the list for attending a meeting. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah. And so they have a bunch of homeless issues in, in Hawaii. So if you go investigate those while you're there, you can write off your uh, trip. Okay, just spin and just have the time. <laughs> all right, that's all from uh, my uh, my world. All right. Okay. With nothing else, I'm going to adjourn. Okay, right. thank you. See you later. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Right. Enjoy Bye -bye. your vacation. Thank you.